Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 5th, 2022, around 2.20 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including a new outlook for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, which part of the United States is most at risk, and when the tropics will begin to heat up as signs are pointing towards new tropical cyclones forming very soon. Before we get into jumping into that, if you guys do want to go support the channel, channel, channel memberships are now live. Just join the uh, join button. Just click the join button right there, as you can see here on the channel page or right next to the videos. And these will unlock exclusive perks uh, such as custom weather alerts and a chance to go on a hurricane chase with me. So if you guys do want to support the channel, that is a good way to do so as well. Now, jumping straight into everything, looking at the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is quite quiet across the basin for now. That is certainly some good news. But signs are pointing to, towards things beginning to change. First of all, we do actually have a pretty potent tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa today. This is actually moving off towards the west here. Now, this is kind of the lead wave that we've been talking about for the last couple of days. And there's actually a much stronger tropical wave that will be emerging uh, as we progress through the next 48 to 72 hours. And that will begin to make its way across the tropical Atlantic where additional development is certainly possible from there. In the East Pacific Basin, we have two systems to monitor. First of all, Invest Area 99E. This has a 90% chance of developing over the next five days as this generally heads towards the Northwest here. This could get pretty close here to some of the islands in the East Pacific Basin and we will have to watch this for potential impacts to portions of the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas and the Baja Peninsula. But so far, indications are that this will stay pretty far away from that area. And then we're, we will be also watching a system moving into the Central Pacific with a 40% chance over the next five days as this also moves westward and then into the Central Pacific. Now in the Atlantic Basin, we have a couple of things happening. First of all, the new Colorado State University forecast that just dropped as of yesterday. Again, the forecast calls for 18 named storms, 8 hurricanes, and 4 major hurricanes with an accumulated cyclone energy ACE index of 150. So this is above average still by quite a fair margin. That ACE index is just about on the hyperactive side, but it's just a little bit down uh, from, the, from the previous forecast of around 180. Uh, but this leads to something that we'll have to be watching over the next couple of days here. First of all, uh, the tropical cyclone risk impacts. This is based on the Colorado State University forecast and uh, just from the pressure patterns and stuff like that. But generally speaking, again, this is showing impacts uh, from a potential tropical storm. So within 25 miles of a given point. So this is your risk area basically of seeing a tropical storm within 25 miles of a given point. And that very high constitutes as anything over about 95%. That high is right around from 70 to around 90. That orange is 40 to 60 and yellow is about 0 to 30 so what we're really kind of look, looking at here is, again, there's a pretty high risk here of seeing something tracking into the Caribbean and impacting the island chain here. Really, the greatest risk is actually going to be in the southern portion of those island chains. We kind of saw that with how Bonnie was. And then there was a little bit of a risk reduction across portions of the northern uh, parts here of the Windward Islands. Again, this actually shows uh, that there's about still an 85 to 90% chance though. Uh, so this is just down about 5% from uh, on the northern side here. And then focusing on the Western Caribbean, again, Jamaica included, uh, there is still only about a 90% chance. And I say only because that is down just a little bit. All of the Bahamas have now been upgraded to that high risk of seeing a tropical storm within 25 miles of a given point. And of course, the western tip of Cuba is under that very high risk as well as portions of Central America. And there actually is an inland threat as well to portions of Central America as well. So that will be something to kind of keep in mind. And then the Yucatan Peninsula has a 95 or greater percent chance of seeing tropical cyclone impacts or a tropical storm within 25 miles of a given point. For the entire Gulf Coast states, including Florida, we notice that, again, generally speaking here, most of Florida is under that very high risk. So about a 95% chance, actually on the dot, a 95% chance of seeing a tropical storm within 25 miles of a given point. And then really for the rest of the Gulf of Mexico, that is ranging really from about 80 to about 90% across most of the entire Gulf of Mexico. So the entire Gulf is at a pretty high risk of seeing some impacts this year. 
And then, of course, up the eastern seaboard now, Georgia, South Carolina, and portions of North Carolina have a high risk as well. And then portions of northern North Carolina, including, yes, uh, Rodanthe and some of the Outer Banks and then upwards towards about the central part of New Jersey has a moderate risk of impacts. Again, New Jersey, or I'm sorry, not New Jersey, North Carolina, especially in the southern part, has about an 80% chance in that that begins to kind of taper off as you go uh, further north with here. And this is just based on the Colorado State University forecast. So this is not improvised at all. This is literally per verbatim taken off the Colorado State forecast. And then as we begin to head further northward here, that begins to drop off till you get about a 30, about a 20 to 30% chance of impacts there. So certainly the greatest risk of impacts will be from the Gulf Coast and Caribbean all the way through portions of North Carolina, where I think uh, there could be a couple storms this year that do make its way uh, close to that vicinity. So we'll have to kind of keep an eye on that. Now, focusing on what's going to be happening over the next several days, there are some changes that are starting to occur. So let's look at the GFS forecast. It's the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And we can see here today that everything is pretty quiet. We do have that developing tropical cyclone in the East Pacific Basin today. And this will be heading off towards the north and west here with time. But notice in the Atlantic Basin, we kind of get this interaction between some tropical waves here. And a new tropical wave will actually begin to move off into the Atlantic and interact with this monsoon trough. And as it does so, there might be some energy that tries to spin up here on the GFS forecast, this actually tries to get a little area of bundled uh, vorticity, and there actually is a little surface circulation that begins to form here by about August 12th. Now, this is coming down in time, so this is at 162 hours from now, so this is certainly still not in the immediate five-day range, but this is coming into a little bit more of a closer in range where the model data is not necessarily just complete garbage at that point. Uh, but generally speaking, the main problem is going to be the moisture. We can tell that there is actually a pretty decent amount of dry air and there's not really a lot of moisture surrounding this system either. And the upper level environment uh, we can see at this time is going to remain vastly uh, unfavorable because there is actually this upper level low here, kind of a stacked upper lows, and that's creating a lot of shear that will be likely trying to impinge on the system. So we'll see because if this comes off at a little bit of a lower latitude, actually, this actually may have more of a chance to kind of survive uh, down there. Now, the European ensembles here, the 6Z run, do indicate actually that there could be something developing. This is 144 hours from now. So by the 11th, this is about 2 a.m. on August 11th. And we actually notice there is a fair amount of clustering on the latest European ensembles that do maybe support a little bit of an uptick here. And just to kind of look at it, to be fair, this is the European, or I'm sorry, the GFS ensembles for the same time. And they too do indicate that there could be some type of tropical system or a very weak disturbance that is moving through the central Atlantic at this time. So it'll be something to kind of keep in mind. Of course, we are still more than seven days out from any impacts to portions of the Lesser Antilles. So obviously there's no need to worry. And this will likely, if anything, remain a pretty weak system. But we will have to watch this as this moves into the Central Atlantic and then moves into the West Atlantic where conditions will become a little bit more favorable, it seems, after that. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.